So this video is designed to be uh, kind of a follow-up to the previous video that I did on just using a minor rel environment, uh, getting Minecraft running locally just on your local machine on Linux. Um, and so this one is kind of designed to iterate on that. So instead of creating our own environment and, uh, you know, showing you more technical details there, I actually have a massive repository and a large, a much bigger project. I did not create this, OpenAI did. Um, but we're going to be messing around with this and we're going to see a really practical and really fun uh, use case for this stuff. Um, hence, you know, Minecraft and AI combined. Uh, it's, it's really cool stuff. So I have a terminal open and I have a browser open. So the approach I'm going to take here is pretty much just look over this whole GitHub thing, go over the paper associated with this uh, entire model and explain to you guys how I go over this uh, very briefly. And then we're just going to run the model uh, doing a little demonstration. So this Git, uh, we're pretty much just going to clone this Git repo. So that's what I've done here. So if I list, you'll see I have a bunch of stuff, uh, including a bunch of the models as well. So what do these models do? Well, first we should know that we need to install these. So you pretty much just create your own environment by going, um, you go Python dash M and virtually in via like this. Um, and then to activate it, you just go source and then activate it that way. Um, and then you're just going to pip install these. So it's very careful that you be, uh, you know, you, you, you need to be careful about which operating system you're on. If you're on Windows, you won't be able to do this. If you're on Mac, you might not be able to do this. So I would advise just looking at the Minorel GitHub. So this is the link. And then the, you just search up Minorel on, on Google search or whatever, and it'll come up. But I uh, just review these and then, you know, make sure you're doing the installation correctly. But Pretty much once you've done once you're done that you can go and head and just download models and then run the agent so um if i wanted to run this agent here um what i would do is i would go here and i would just go python you know run uh, agent and um you know i would th this is how i run the model with the uh the essentially the model with the largest size so um these are these are little agents that are going to fire up into an environment and they're going to like play around and, and do stuff in the Minecraft world. So this is the most powerful one. And for time stakes, I'll just demo this one. I won't demo the other ones because this is, this might be the coolest one to watch. Um, so I use the foundation model, uh, 3x size, and then the weights. I use um, so essentially a fine-tuned early game model. So it's fine-tuned on early game. So while that's running... Um, We'll just look at the rest of this. So, I mean, you, you can you can reproduce this on your own machine, but you have the foundational uh, weights, you have fine-tuned ones, um, and you have reinforcement learning, and then you have this IDM here. And I'm going to go more in depth into what this IDM is doing um, under the hood and how it's like really, really cool in terms of data. So um, I'm going to run this after and, and, you know, maybe it'll work. Uh, it, it has a lot of memory requirements though, so maybe not. Um, but yeah, so we'll just let this guy fire up here and then after this is done, we'll go into the paper. So as you can see, it's kind of looking around. It's it's fairly slow. The reason why this is so slow is because uh, it has to do a lot of operations for a single you know forward pass in the network to go from the start, the inputs, meaning the pixels, all the way to the action outputs. Uh, that actually takes a lot of operations to do. It's running on a very large neural network architecture. So every time it has to pass through all of those uh, model parameters, it actually takes a bit of time to do that. So that's why you're seeing some delay here. But, uh, you know, it's it's moving around. It's not really doing anything too useful. But, uh, you know, I'll just keep this in the side while we go over the paper here. So, um, you know, I'll just... Maybe. Sure. That's good. So video pre-training. Pretty much what this paper sum, uh, summarizes is you start off by playing a little bit of Minecraft on your own. So you play like three hours of the game. Um, and then after, during those three hours, you're not only writing MP4 files to a folder, but you're also writing your actions to a folder as well. So every single frame, it keeps track of the pixels. So, you know, your 640 by your, uh, your, your 640 by your 360. And then each pixel has a depth of like maybe three 
uh, values between 0 and 255 for pixels. That, that's just what the, the pixel data looks like. And then it has time, uh, time steps. Um, and then our actions are stored as JSON files. So it's it's quite literally just did the person, you know, did the player click their mouse this frame or did the person press W or did they press space this frame? It'll either be a one or a zero. So uh, on or off. And this is ju this just happens each frame. So every action that could pop the, the entire action space is listed in a Python dictionary and it literally is just one or zero every frame. And that's, that's how you label the actions or that's how you keep labels of them for per frame. And so what we do is we get a bunch of these uh, mapped uh, MP4 files to JSON files of actions. And you feed this through the IDM or the inverse dynamics model. It's essentially a labeler network. So you just feed in these pixels and it tries to predict, you know, what did, what did the player do? What, what actions did they pick? So if, if the pixel shifted up this way and then went back down over a few frames, it means that the player probably jumped. So the network would have to learn that. And then uh, that that's like pretty much the entire inverse dynamics model is you would you would just use a little bit of your own data and you would train it and you would get it to generalize over, you know, maybe a few hours, maybe a few minutes, depending on the intensity. Um, OpenAI was able to get this model to a staggering 96, 90.6 uh, performance on keyboards and about 97% on mouse input. So uh, pretty good. Um, I might try to run this later, but the whole point of this inverse dynamics model is literally just to take a small amount of like, literally just get the model to watch a bunch of YouTube videos um, and map those YouTube videos to actions at 90% accuracy or higher. And so when you feed this into a bigger agent that's literally learning to just act in the real world, um, you can train on this massive data set of videos that you just downloaded from the internet. You could just scrape a bunch of videos from YouTube or download them or, you know, whatever legal means necessary. And you just get a giant thing of actions. And then, uh, you know, you can, you can train a bigger model on that to generalize over the entire internet of Minecraft data. And then after it's pre-trained this way, um, after it's done in the pre-training phase, then you can introduce like reinforcement learning. You give it like custom reward functions. So, you know, if it crafts, a piece if it, if it craft a stick in the first 10 seconds it gets a reward or something or if it finds diamonds you give it like a lot of reward um and so this way you can just encourage it to you know get these more objective goals faster and that's how you you know get past human performance all this all this internet scale data you can only approach but once you introduce these objective reward functions and no longer are training on human data you can surpass that and so this is kind of what the whole paper is about so uh Pretty much just like a data labeling problem, compute efficiency, um, accuracy, some reports, some architectural stuff. Um, but honestly, just reading through the results after like listening to me talk about this, reading through this will probably make a lot more sense. So terms like VPT means you guessed it, video pre-training. Um, and, uh, you know, you can, you can sort of just dig through this, see like, you know, look at these graphs, see, oh, what is the probability of it getting a diamond pickaxe? Oh, 2.5, um, right? And you get these uh, conclusions and stuff and, and you get, you know, some interesting takeaways from here that you could apply to, you know, some crazy field like, I don't know, asteroid mining, you know, we might be there someday, but this is a good start at least. So uh, that's, that's pretty much the entire point here. Um, and I don't know what this thing has been up to, but it looks like it's crafted a piece of wood, which is really cool. I'm going to turn it off now. And we're actually going to snag this uh, inverse dynamics model. So I'm just going to clear this. We're going to go Python run inverse dynamics model. And hopefully I don't run out of VRAM. So we'll just give this a second here. Oh, and we're out of memory. So this is probably because I'm recording right now, but um, if you have an eight gigabyte uh, RAM GPU, uh, you can actually run this and you can literally see it. It'll take uh, it'll take frames and it will say, this is the action that we predict this frame. And it'll be like insanely accurate. You know, if the player moved like 30 degrees that way, it'll be like 29.8 or 30.2. It'll have a little bit of error, but it's still like remarkably accurate. And so uh, it's just a really cool thing to have, just being able to see like how it interprets the entire Minecraft world. But uh, 
yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I tried to go through that as quick as possible. So, you know, if I missed anything, uh, you know, maybe leave a comment. Um, I should also say that I, I do this, you know, tutoring and consulting stuff. So uh, there's a link in the description if you want to go check that out. I can help you figure out how to set this thing up or or how to iterate on it or even uh, how to solve hardware computer vision problems or, you know, name your name your AI thing. Um, but yeah, I, so, so I do that stuff. There's a link in the description. Um, you also might want to subscribe as well. You know, that can help uh, not only yourself and, and ensure that you get access to this content and you get notifications, but uh, also to spread awareness and say, hey, uh, Elliot makes good coding videos. Uh, people should subscribe to him. I want this guy to be more noticed, right? You know, people need to know this stuff, right? And so it just kind of helps me get out there and get some exposure. So, uh, you know, it's totally free. You can unsubscribe at any time, but thanks for watching.